We'll now start with the second round of questions with Ms. Gill. FCCPS has recently invested heavily on programs related to integrating technology into education, most notably the MacBooks at GMHS and the school's new major space. Do you think that fiscal priority towards, towards technology in our school is appropriate? Uh, so again, I think this is what I touched on in my intro, um, using technology in our schools. Uh, I, I do think it should be used as a tool to enhance learning. Um, I don't want to see technology create more barriers among, uh, between our students. Uh, should be behind a computer screen instead of interacting. I'd like to see technology as a way that's interactive, that gets everybody around a circle talking to each other more. Um, I do think that, uh, as I said before, I think that we should use technology as a way to teach our students how to be good online citizens. It would be great if you were learning how to use technology um, and use Facebook or other, um, do you use Facebook anymore? Probably not. Use other services, um, whatever it is that teenagers use, um, in a way that um, helps you in the future and doesn't hurt you going forward. Um, you know, looking at what employers are going to look at when they, when they search your name and you go out to look for a job. Um, so really teaching you how to use technology responsibly. Thank you, Ms. Gill. Mr. Kent? Uh, so the same question. Uh, I, I also alluded to technology in my opening remarks. Absolutely necessary, but we gotta remember that they're tools. Just to give you an example, I mentioned I work at a think tank. We have uh, use a lot of software, uh, statistical software and the like, uh, but you still gotta know the basic math and statistics and the data. So they're great, so you have to be familiar with them. Um, and I'm afraid sometimes we're going to get away from the basics. So use the tools, the you know, technology, whatever it may be, as an enabler. Um, I also you know, worry about the use of it, how it's implemented. Uh, my son, Sebastian, he, he took a course here in physics, and he mentioned to me a lot of the lectures were via YouTube, and they weren't uh, George Mason teachers. They were, I don't know where they were from, he felt it was a little bit disconnected from you know, the classroom. There's a little bit of disconnection going on there. Overall, things worked out, but some of those issues I do worry about. A lot of you, there's a lot of great technology, but how you use it is very important. And it should not be a distraction from the core learning, but should enhance it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. King. Ms. Kutcher, would you like to do the question? No, that's fine. Uh, I guess what I would say is it's a little bit um, similar in that um, you know, technology is a tool. So it's, it's all the, the way that you use it. And, and it can provide uh, incredible access, um, as I'm sure you have used it in your classrooms where you're having a conversation with someone on the other side of the world. Um, and, and students with learning disabilities, uh, my son uses voice recognition software. And, and so there, it's an, an incredible thing. But everything in balance. And one of the things about the rollout of technology in our school um, I feel like there was a lot of uh, information from the student body about that that wasn't taken into account. And uh, so I, I think it was difficult for the teachers as well because you just have to sort of on the fly, how do we integrate this into the classroom? I think they've done a wonderful job of figuring that out. Um, but I think it's all on order of balance. I did a, um, some uh, um, Freedom of Information Act request for how much we've spent. And we've spent, I think in the last three or four years, don't quote me, uh, over $2 million on Apple products. And so that's a lot of money. And so I think when we, moving forward, when we do things, I would just like to do uh, them thoughtfully um, with an understanding of what, the, what we're gonna get out of it um, for the money that we spend. Thank you, Ms. Kachma. Mr. Rackliff, would you like us to read the question? Sure, let's get back. SCCPS has recently invested heavily on programs related to integrating technology and education, most notably the MacBooks at GMHS and the school's new major space. Do you think the fiscal priority toward education in our school is appropriate? I, I think that technology is an important fiscal priority uh, for our education system. I think that this is a wired world and you guys need to be prepared to function in it. Um, I don't have the rollout may have been slightly clumsy at times, but I think, and there were some serious problems with it, but I definitely think that you guys should be using technology and have technology integrated into virtually all appropriate learning situations. I'm not a teacher, so I can dissect that for you, but you have great educators here who can. Uh, I'm not afraid of technology at all. I think that there are some pitfalls with technology because it's a way for you guys to be connected to the world 
um, without somebody there as a sort of uh, crossing guard, if you will, to protect you from people who are bad actors. Um, I think that all we really need to do is, at the high school level, is educate you guys about what those dangers are so that you, you don't make a mistake and you don't get hurt. Um, I think more filtering at the lower levels, which is now in place, is uh, a way to protect the little kids. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Rasmussen. Mr. Ryder, would you like us to review the question? I'm good, thank you. Um, so I'm the last person to criticize the use of technology. I'm going to uh, <clears throat> probably upset your IB teachers by telling you that I didn't take any history after ninth grade. I, I tested out of all of it just so I could take a lot of math and science because um, that's what I wanted to do. So I had a sort of a, a math science major in undergrad and I, I'm sorry, in high school. Um, and I, I learned to program on punch cards using a language called PL1 that none of you would have even heard of anymore. Uh, that said, I think we've gone a little overboard on technology, at least last year. I think it's gotten a lot better this year. Uh, you know, it's easy to fall in love with technology, and I'm afraid I'm going to repeat a little bit of what was said before here. But you know, as Jake said, technology should be integrated in all appropriate learning situations. Well, appropriate is important. Sometimes technology is not, not appropriate. Uh, it can help a lot. It's particularly valuable and important you know, for students that have really exceptional abilities and students that have some disabilities that need to be addressed. That technology can help bridge those gaps and help all of those people learn as effectively as possible. But it has to be done the right way. Just a quick note, um, when uh, this was discussed in the school board, uh, your principal, Mr. Burr, talked about how there was a metric at the start of last year that these Technology was supposed to be used in 50% of classroom situations. I'm misstating that roughly. But that led to overuse. And so that's what you really need. You need the right strategies and tactics to have the right use of technology. Thank you, Mr. Edgar. Mr. Sharp, would you like us to read the question? Oh, thank you. One of my great teachers on this subject was Meg Curtin, the first student representative to the school board. When we had a discussion some time ago, even before the, the technology that we're using right now was beginning to be used, she pointed out that uh, technology at that time uh, was in some cases being misused, and that uh, she, she felt there were, uh, that there was a need for some guidelines uh, on how it should be used, and that uh, there were distractions that were happening in the classroom. And I was, I was really quite, quite amazed at the very responsible attitude that she brought to the use of technology and, and its application uh, for her and for her fellow students in education. And I'd encourage uh, you all to think about perhaps a, a, uh, an, an addendum to your honor code or some other way that you would express uh, how you could uh, find a responsible path for use of technology that benefits you. I would use uh, uh, as a supplement to, to that kind of uh, approach, uh, the analogy of the fitness center. If you go to the fitness center and there are machines there that help you to build your physical skills, help you to build your endurance, do it in a safe way, you use those machines. But if they're, if, if they're not really a help to you, there's no reason to go there. Same way with your uh, te technology for our education. Thank you, Mr. Sharp. Ms. Smarden, would you like us to read the question? No, that's fine. Um, I'll just start with a personal story, and that is about um, my daughter in seventh grade who reads um, at least two grade levels behind and has um, really used technology for herself to open up a world of learning. She did not enjoy learning. As you can imagine, if you're trying your seventh, she was sixth, fifth, fourth grade, you're trying to read books and trying to learn to read on books two grade levels behind. The content is really not very interesting. A fourth grader reading a second grader book is not fun. The, her iPad opened the world for her. She watches NASA videos, Bill Nye, she wants to be a scientist. And that was because of technology and what she was able to access outside of the classroom. Um, so that's really important. Um, I, I would recommend for anyone who hasn't read The World is Flat by Thomas Friedman, where he talks about technology being central to the changing global economy. You need to be part of that changing global economy and big figures in it. And so technology is critically important for you to do that. Um, the, the competition for you has grown significantly worldwide because of technology. So embrace it. Having said that also, 
Um, we need great teachers, and it's, it's again, I'll, I'll say it's also just a tool. And the idea of math books for everyone, please remember, not everyone in this community can afford computers and internet access, so providing these is an equity issue in my mind. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Martin. Mr. Castillo, would you like us to reread the question? If you please. As CCPS has recently invested heavily on programs relating to integrating technology into education, most notably the MacBooks at GMHS and the schools in your neighbor space. Do you think the fiscal priority toward technology in our school is appropriate? I, I think it, it is, but I also think it's, it's something that's going to take time to work on. For example, uh, I mentioned three kids. There's also Grace, who's grad who graduated in the class of 2014. And I watched her go through the online AP Gov course. And I have to say, I was not happy um, because I thought the content was low. I thought it was delivered in a way that was guaranteed to make you feel like you were watching paint dry. And we're, we've been working on that. You know, the Virginia Department of Education has mandated online courses. But you know, just because it's online doesn't mean that it has to be boring. And it's getting better. Um, but I think what we deliver and how we deliver is very important. Um, you know, the flipped classrooms, such as Khan Academy, there's a lot of great content out there. There's a lot of material that can be delivered and used. Um, Time-shifting manners, that's, that's quite valuable. Um, I think, you know, I've been a professor. I've taught uh, law school classes for three semesters, and I've seen the distractions on the other side of the screen for my students and watching them. And one of the things we're going to have to learn as, as future citizens of this world is dealing with distractions in our world because I'm distracted by these things as much as anybody else and we have to learn to overcome it. We can't avoid it. So it's going to be a work in progress. I think we're making good strides and we're going to have to continue to work on it and we're going to make mistakes. Thank you, Mr. Castillo.